What up, everybody? Instructor Boots back again here with Order of Operations Lesson 2. Let's see what's behind the shield today. So in today's lesson, I will be able to solve multi-step whole number computational problems with parentheses by using my order of operations. So the difference between yesterday and today is today we're going to add the parentheses in our questions that we'll be solving. So just to review some math vocabulary, uh, the first two you already have written down from your notes from yesterday, so you do not need to write them again, but it's always good to review. An operation in math is whatever you're doing to the numbers, right? So typically we're talking about adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Our order of operations would be the order that you're going to use those operations, right? So the order that you solve math problems. And then when we're talking about parentheses today, we're talking about parentheses being used to group things together. Now you have um, been using parentheses since at least third grade, right? When you were doing the distributive property, so you had to regroup and group things, but parentheses are simply used to group things together. Let's take a look at a story to help us understand that. So you're this knight and you've been sent on a mission from your king and it's gonna be a little while and you might run into some dangerous people on the road, right? So in your bag that you're packing, you pack three swords and two bows, right? But you're not traveling alone, you're traveling with three other people, so four people total in your group that all have the same bag of three swords and two bows. So here we have a math expression representing that story, okay? So you put the three swords in the two bag, or sorry, in the two um, bows in a bag, which means you grouped them together. And so in math, you would use parentheses to show that. So parentheses are kind of like a bag that you're grouping things together in. They're gonna bring things together, and then you had four people that had that same bag. So you were really doing four times five items in the bag. Okay. So that's just kind of a quick story to kind of maybe help you remember what you're doing with parentheses. Let's take a look at our order of operations. Parentheses to start. Exponents the next part. Multiplication and division left to right is smart. Add subtract is next. Left to right is best. Now you've done the equation and your teacher's impressed. Man, that song gets me every time. I love that song. If you haven't listened to it, please go ahead and check it out. You'll see our link popping up right here, right? But parentheses to start. So this is what we're adding to what we did yesterday, right? So yesterday, we skipped the parentheses. We know exponents are going to be a middle school thing, um, but there is going to be a lesson on that in a little bit for those who want to continue to push their brains. That's going to be lesson four of our order of operations playlist. And then multiplication and division, remember, are the exact same fact family. So they're equal to each other. So you go from left to right. You don't do one before the other. And then add and subtract again, another fact family. So again, you go from left to right. In lesson number one, we focused on these two lines. And in lesson number two, we're just going to simply add our parentheses. So let's take a look at an I do problem where we can use these steps to help us. So again, we're trying to find out what T represents. Now, some of you might remember this problem from yesterday's we do, and, but yesterday we didn't have the parentheses, but we had the same operations in the same digit in digits. And when we solved them, we got the answer five. That was our we do problem. It should be in your notes, right? Well, today, the only thing different is we added parentheses to group the three and the six together. So when we're going through our steps, we can't cross out the parentheses yet because we haven't solved them. So we need to group our parentheses together, right? Or group what's inside the parentheses together. So three plus six is nine. Then I rewrite this, right? Equals T. And now I've solved my parentheses. I don't have any exponents. I do have division and I only have one operation left. So really that's what I have to do, but I have division. So now I'm doing nine divided by three, which equaled three. So I'm going to say that three equals T. Okay. Now yesterday we got five because if the parentheses aren't there, then you have to do division before you do addition and subtraction. But when you add the parentheses, you're saying, hey, do this part first. Group these numbers together and solve this first before you do anything else. So that's what parentheses are doing in our order of operations. Let's do one together. 
Okay, so we want to evaluate the expression. Now this one I made a little bit more difficult. This is actually a little bit above grade level standard, but it's always good to keep pushing ourselves, right? So we have parentheses, but then inside my parentheses, I have two operations. I have multiplication and division. Once you go inside the parentheses, and again, you're not gonna have to do this in fifth grade, but we're always pushing our brains here at Instructive Beats, right? Once you go inside the parentheses, you follow the order of operations. So I have multiplication and addition inside my parentheses. I have to do my multiplication because it comes first in the order of operations, right? So I need to solve eight times four, which is 32. And now I haven't gotten rid of the parentheses yet because I haven't solved, I haven't grouped everything together. Okay, so if I don't write the parentheses, that might confuse me because I'd have to do four divided by 16 first, but because I remember to write my parentheses, I know I need to finish out my parentheses, which is going to be 36, and now I'm going to do 36 divided by 16. So now I've done my, I finished my parentheses, I've done my exponents, and I only have division left. When I do 36 divided by 16, I'm going to get two, and four sixteenths left, which is going to simplify to two and one fourth. If you're not sure how to divide, or if you're not sure how to um, write remainders as uh, mixed numbers, please check out our remainder song. You'll see the link up here. And then we also have an awesome simplifying song to help you remember how to simplify if you haven't learned that or if you just forgot. Okay, so go ahead and check those two songs out. We would love to have you click like on them too. So maybe you're ready to try this one by yourself. Go ahead and push pause and solve this one on your notes and then play and you can see how you did. If you're not ready to do it yet, no worries. You can just do it with us when we do it. So hopefully you just push pause and solved it. So now let's go ahead and check it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down my order of operations, okay? Using my song in my head. I won't sing it for you because I'm not the musical one in our Instructive Beats duo. Um, and the first thing I need to do is see if I have any parentheses, which I do. So I need to solve my parentheses out. Six divided by two is three. So now I'm going to write, rewrite my other numbers and my operations, okay? Now I have, I don't have any exponents. I have addition and multiplication. If I'm not careful, I would rush through this and do four plus seven because I'm just going from left to right. But if you remember the math convention that they came up with, the agreement to follow the rules of, op, uh, the, the, rules of the order of operations, then you need to do your multiplication first. Okay, so now I'm done with that, which was 21, and then four plus 21, I only have one operation left, and that's going to be 25. So when I evaluate this expression, I come to the answer of 25. We are now ready. Typically we would be done, but we have something extra special. Hit the trumpets. <laughs> the challenge zone. This is where we take our skills and take it to the next level of conceptual thinking. You are not allowed to solve this problem to help you answer this, okay? But the question is, where could I put my parentheses and not change the value of the expression and how did you know to put them there? Okay, so if we solved this expression, it would give us an answer. If I wanted to add parentheses to it and get the same exact answer I got when there wasn't parentheses, where could I put them? If you need to think about it, go ahead and push pause. Again, don't solve it out. Use your understanding of your steps of your order of operations. All right, hopefully you thought about it. Maybe you're completely lost. Maybe you have a good idea. The correct answer would be to put them around the two and the five, okay? Because parentheses are telling you to do that first, right? Group these together first before you do any of the other steps. Well, when you don't have parentheses here, guess what? You had addition, subtraction, and multiplication. And when you're going down your order of operations, you'd have to do your multiplication and division first anyway before you do your addition and subtraction. So putting the parentheses around the two and the five just tell you, hey, do what you were gonna do first anyway and do it first, right? Which is kind of redundant. So that's where you put those parentheses. That's kind of a higher level thinking question. If you weren't there yet, don't worry about it. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Thank you so much for checking us out today on Instructive Beats. I hope you'll go and check out those songs we recommended inside of this video. Um, I hope you'll check out lesson three. Make sure you got your notes for it. 
We appreciate you hanging out with us today. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already done that. Instruct the beats. Out.